diving deep into the books of the scholars, extracting the pearls of knowledge hidden within, uncovering quotes, clarifying misconceptions, referencing the true ulama. Welcome to In the Library. Today we will be mentioning a scholar who is a beacon of truth, a pillar of oneness, and a lantern of guidance. He is none other than Al-Imam al Ustad Abdul Qadir ibn Tahir al-Tamimi al-Baghdadi, also known as Abu Mansur al-Baghdadi. He was born in Baghdad, which used to be considered an intellectual center and hub for the world with many scholars coming from there. He died 429 after Hijrah, which effectively makes him among the early scholars in Islam, and for that reason, his words draw attention to the ears and appeal to the hearts of Muslims all over the world. He followed the Shafi'i school of thought in jurisprudence and the Ash'ari Sunni school of thought in Aqidah. He earned the title of Al-Ustad because he was firmly rooted in knowledge. The great scholar Abu Ishaq al-Asfarayini was one of his teachers. Abu Ishaq was the student of the great Imam al-Bahili. And al-Bahili was a student of the great Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. May Allah raise all of their ranks and reward them for their service to this nation. So Abu Mansur al-Baghdadi was a student of a student of one of the students of Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari. He was in the blessed chain of scholars who helped spread the belief and defend it from the factions of misguidance. Some of his books include Fusul al-Din, a book around the topic of the foundations of the religion. Fadaih al-Qadariyah, a book where he clarifies the deviation of the Qadariyah sect. Fadaih al-Mu'tazila, a book where he clarifies the deviation of the Mu'tazila sect, a book titled Al-Minal Wal-Nihal, another book titled Ta'wil Al-Mutashabihat Min Al-Akhbari Wal-Ayat. But the spotlight today will be on his book titled Al-Farqu Bain Al-Firaq, The Differences Between the Different Sects. This book is an explanation of the deviation of the Muslim nation that the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us was going to occur. The way he structured this book is that he starts off by mentioning that hadith that this nation is going to divide into 73 different sects and that one group is going to be saved. Then he begins to explain the different sects that emerged, their beliefs and ideologies. And after mentioning the different sects, he begins to mention the scholarly consensuses over certain issues. The scholarly consensus, ijma' is an important proof in the religion because it shows the agreement of Islamic scholars on a certain issue. And after the ijma' has been established, it is not valid for anyone to go against it and say anything opposite. For example, he would say, ajma'u ala, which means they, the scholars of Islam, agreed upon. And he will mention that issue. On page 292, he mentioned the ijma' scholarly consensus that Allah exists without a place. He said, they agreed that Allah is not contained by place and time does not elapse onto him. This quote is important because it clearly establishes without any doubt that the belief of all Muslims is that Allah exists without a place and that time does not elapse onto him. Allah exists without a place. He is not up, down, left, right, above or below. He is not in front of us or behind us. He is not physically with us wherever we go, and he does not dwell inside of us. He is not above or sitting on the throne, and he is not in the skies. Abu Mansur al-Baghdadi then mentions two quotes from Imam Ali, Karram Allahu Wajha. The first quote explains why Allah created the throne. Imam Ali said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ الْأَرْشَ إِظْهَارًا لِقُدْرَتِهِ وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذْهُ مَكَانًا لِذَاتِهِ Allah created the throne as an indication of his power and did not create it as a place for himself. If Allah has power over the biggest of creations, that means he has power over anything else smaller. Just like if you can lift a 20-pound dumbbell, that means you can lift anything else smaller. The second quote from Imam Ali is, كان الله ولا مكان وهو الآن على ما عليه كان. Allah existed and there was no place and he is as he was, that is, he exists without a place. Allah existed before the universe without a place, and after creating the universe, he is as he was. He doesn't change. He existed without a place before creating the universe, and after creating the universe, he is as he was. Allah exists without a place, 
This is the belief of all Muslims by consensus.